Maluska. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting old and I don't get it. <laughs> so listen, let me ask you, um, who uh, let your phone go for you today? Michelle? Who made your breakfast? Michelle? moment today is entitled Presbyterian Sharing is Transforming Lives in Central America and Mexico. Based in Guatemala, General Coordinator Judith Casanilla and the staff of the Protestant Center for Pastoral Studies in Central America are empowering women and girls to their ministry and accompaniment. Women learn how to take on leadership roles in churches and their communities through faith-based activities about their personal and legal rights and the importance of formal education. After completing Healthy Relationships course, one woman said, I feel like a different woman before I used to live locked in my home with a domestic routine. But now, I have new friends, we do creative things. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, help us now to drink from the deep waters of Scripture, and revive us by your Spirit of holiness. We pray in Christ's name. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't happen to me. 
younger person. Right. Reading from the message translation, first in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, and verse 36. Is that responsible? What? Responsive reading. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. One of those days. What? That was one of those days. Yeah. Responsive reading, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your God and your staff, they can comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. Book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 36 to 43. It's the last quarter of this chapter, a chapter which is devoted most of its uh, verses to Saul. Again, at verse 36. Down the road away in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, gazelle in our language. She was well known for doing good and helping out. During the time Peter was in the area, she became sick and died. Her friends prepared her body for burial and put her in a cool room. Some of the disciples had heard that Peter was visiting a nearby Lydda and sent two men to ask if he would be so kind as to come over. Peter got right up and went with them. They took him into the room where Tabitha's body was laid out. Her old friends, most of them widows, were in the room mourning. They showed Peter pieces of clothing the gazelle had made while she was with them. Peter put the widows all out of the room. He knelt and prayed. Then he spoke directly to the body, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He took her hand and helped her up. Then he called in the believers and widows and presented her to them alive. When this became known all over Jotha, many put their trust in Christ. Peter stayed on a, stayed on a long time in Jotha, as a guest of Simon Tanner. And reading from the book of Revelation, in the seventh chapter, again, verse 9. I looked again, and I saw a huge crowd, too large to count. Everyone was there, all nations and tribes, all races and languages. And they were standing dressed in white robes and waving palm branches, standing before the throne in the land and heartily singing, Salvation to our God and his throne, salvation to the land. All who were standing around the throne, angels, elders, animals, fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Oh yes. The blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, the honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever and ever, O oh yeah. Just then, one of the elders addressed me. Who are these dressed in white robes? And where did they come from? Taken aback, I said, Oh, sir, I have no idea, but you must know. Then he told me, These are those who come from the great tribulation, and they washed their robes, scrubbed them clean in the blood of the Lamb. 
That's why they're standing before God's throne. They serve him day and night in his temple. The one on the throne will pitch his tent there for them. No more hunger, no more thirst, no more scorching heat. The lamb on the throne will shepherd them, will lead them to spring waters of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. And our gospel lesson from St. John, chapter 10, reading verses 22 to 30. They were celebrating Hanukkah just then in Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was strolling in the temple across Solomon's porch. The Jews circling him said, How long are you going to keep us guessing? If you're the Messiah, tell us straight out. Jesus answered, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my Father. Actions that speak louder than words. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep recognize my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The Father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer and thief. No one could ever get them away from him. I and the Father are one heart and one mind. The word of God for the people of God. In this morning, you find, save your life and shepherd you. <clears throat> Women to remember. 
today in our church. We have designated this Sunday as Christian Family Sunday. It is also Mother's Day. And so with that in mind, tying those together, a theme might well be women to remember. In the book of Acts, the author Luke presents quite a number of stories, actually, about the power of God in the early church. And there are many people today who are writing in theological circles who believe that is where the church is headed. From the era of Christendom to modernism to postmodernism, and all the way back to the way it was in the beginning. That aside, it is clear from Luke's story here in Acts that God's power was evident. It was evident in many ways. It was evident, for example, in the way the hunger and thirst of people were met. The hungry were fed. It was the way in which the sick were dealt with. Many of them were healed. And many of the demons or spirits that were hurting people were run out of town. And so in today's reading, we read about a resurrection story that involves a very special woman. Luke underlies significance of women in a time when very little attention was ever given. History does not speak well of women at that period. It was a culture where women weren't even accepted as witnesses in a legal case. Yet, they are the first ones to report that Jesus is alive. Luke is the only gospel writer that tells about women financing the ministry of people like Paul in Asia Minor. Because once the gospel moved out of the bigger city of Jerusalem into the wider countryside, out into parts of Asia Minor like Ephesus, etc. It required some financing. And in many ways, if it weren't for women, that wouldn't have happened. So, in this book, for example, Luke speaks quite a bit about Lydia, a wealthy merchant who did much for the early church. The special woman, though, in today's story is called Tabitha, or the Greek name is Dorcas. Well, I don't know, when I, I haven't heard in our denomination, but in the United Church, there are many women's groups that are called Dorcas, circles, whatever. An important figure noted for her good works. And when someone like that dies in a community, people remember. And people talk about what that person meant to the community. And so this seems to have been taken place for Tabitha, this woman who has done so much for so many, running charity programs in Joppa, living proof of God's work in Jesus, the poor and the needy. She understood that the downtrodden are not to be kept underfoot. She understood and she responded. Those who love God in Christ will love those who are in need. In fact, that's how resurrection works. You can't do resurrection by evening. No, you can't do it by phone either. You have to be there in person, which is part of the church's problem. In any case, this is how Tabitha worked. She went out where the need was, and it was especially needful amongst widows because they were legally out of balance. The letter of James would be well understood by Tabitha when James puts it this way, God talk without God acts 
is outrageous nonsense. Shock waves are felt now to jolt as Tabitha's died. Friends have arrived to her home and they are preparing her body for burial and they are remembering her generosity. And someone in that group realizes that Peter's only about 10 kilometers up the road. And so they send messengers to bring him back. And Peter comes back to Tabitha's home. And Peter senses that this is a very special occasion because these women are perhaps telling him all that this woman has done to him. He sees the love and respect in that room. And then he asks the women to get up, to leave. And closes the door, kneels down and prays by Tabitha's body. Praise to God. And she becomes new again. And Peter takes her by the hand and she stands alive again. And then he opens the door and calls them to come in. In come the widows for whom Tabitha has made so much clothing they couldn't afford to buy because they had no way of earning money and with no husband. They were persona number. And they rejoice and are happy. In large part because they know this woman is going to continue to do for them what she has been doing. Isn't it strange, or maybe not, that so much of this chapter of Acts is spent on this man called Saul? who was a miserable wretch, who was malicious, abusive, murderous. And he gets all this press, and this woman gets two or three lines. Maybe it is not all at all. Tabitha is a model of how followers of Jesus ought to live and act in their communities. And so on a day when we celebrate the gifts of women in the Christian family, we ought to remember and give thanks for all the women who have served others gracefully, with dignity, and humility. There is a story that I think, I'm not sure, but I believe was turned into a country western song. It's called Roses for Mama. And he tells the man who wants to send his mother okay flowers, but he's busy, busy, busy. And so he goes to the flower shop to order flowers to be sent to his mother. And when he was in, there's a little boy there also looking for flowers. He's wanting some roses, but he can't afford them. And so this man gives him the money to buy it. And so they both make the purchases. The little boy leaves. The man asks the florist to send these flowers off to his mother because he can't go see her. And as he continues his car drives away, he passes the cemetery and he looks and sees the same boy kneeling down on the ground by stone. And he stops the car he was in and asks him what he's doing. And he said, I'm putting flowers on my mother's grave. She died over a year ago. And I come and talk with her a lot. And since it's Mother's Day, I'm going to read these roses for her. And the man who goes back to his car, wheels back to the door shop, goes in, says the floors, have you sent those flowers yet? No, forget it. I'll take them now myself. You can't do resurrection life by sending stuff. You go there 
wherever that is. In an age that is so celebrity driven, it is time to spend more time giving thanks for people like women who have shown God's mercy and love and care in the world. It would be well spent if we spent the rest of the day remembering them. One can make a difference simply for the sake of making a difference. And nobody needs to realize it other than the one who makes the difference. Tabitha would likely be very surprised, I think, to you know that her story is so important in the book of Acts. And yet here today we are remembering her. And with her let us also remember those women both here and gone into their eternal presence of God and give thanks for them and pray for those around us that they will have the strength to do the work that we are called to do in Christ's name. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God of love, give we pray to all women, mothers, all that serve, give them strength, give them hope, and help us to be supportive to them as they seek to serve the one who is the way, truth, and life. Amen. Our offerings and our gifts.
for all they gave to us. We pray especially this morning for mothers in Ukraine, Afghanistan, and other countries suffering severe conflicts and war. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, for all your people in the church, that your spirit may give to all of us the guidance and the power we need to move forward in Christ's name. And hear our prayers 